A few severe storms today, a bucket full, and then some tomorrow. We've got problems in the severe weather department. Let's talk about it in today's edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. And it is Wednesday, the 1st of March, 2023. Good morning, I'm Texas Storm Chasers David Reimer. March is going to be coming in like a lion with a busy 48 to 72 hours in the weather department ahead. Let's just go ahead and get into it. I don't want to make this video as long as I did yesterday. Storm Prediction Center at midnight has placed a level 2 risk of severe weather for later this morning and this afternoon across northeast Texas. A level 1 risk, that's the lowest on a 1 to 5 scale for storm coverage, encompasses far eastern big country, but mostly north Texas, including the Metroplex. And this is going to be from this morning through the late afternoon hours. We could have a few storms this morning producing hail couple storms this afternoon in eastern north texas and northeast texas that could produce hail and maybe a tornado let's just jump ahead and take a look at the high resolution rapid refresh and again this is a model simulation of what the radar may look like this morning and this afternoon and again this isn't gospel this isn't going to be written in stone but it's a scenario that might happen uh, we might see one or two storms this morning across southwestern north texas extending northeast into north texas with some hail and then we might see those storms either evolve or we might get a little break before additional thunderstorms probably on the isolated side develop early this afternoon in north texas maybe around the metroplex and then move into northeast texas and there are indications those could get a bit rowdy with uh, large to maybe very large hail hail up to the size of tennis balls perhaps if these get overzealous in the intensity department and we can't rule out a tornado in northeast texas now low level wind shear is going to be on the weaker side today we're not seeing a whole lot of turning with height in the atmosphere in terms of the wind direction but there's going to be plenty of moisture plenty of instability and maybe just enough wind shear to support perhaps an isolated tornado threat we're going to keep an eye on it after about 9 to 10 this evening we're going to be done with the severe weather threat for the night and at least into the pre-dawn hours on thursday now let's go ahead and jump ahead into thursday this is the latest severe weather outlook from the storm prediction center a level four risk has now been introduced across eastern north texas northeast texas and these are risk scales one two three four five are based on the number of storms we're expecting in a given area within about 25 miles of your location not necessarily the severity of them for example and the reason i'm saying this is we could see a storm in a level one risk tomorrow be as intense as a storm in a level four so higher your risk level the more likely you are to have more numerous storms in your neck of the woods tomorrow not necessarily meaning you've got a little severe storm in san antonio producing penny size hail while you've got a severe storm at level four producing tornadoes it's not how that specifically works but eh, it may tomorrow we'll see anyway we've got a level four risk now across eastern north texas northeast texas the enhanced level three risk encompasses more of north texas including the metroplex level two risk the standard risk level roughly from wichita falls down to just west of eastland southeast towards the austin metro new braunfels down to near victoria then just north of galveston the bolivar peninsula up to beaumont and the golden triangle and then the level one risk we note has been expanded west into the big country the concho valley the hill country and towards corpus christi now that's where we could see storms initially fire up tomorrow afternoon if this dry line cool front ends up being further west which it may be and if that happens all these risks are going to be expanded westward so we encourage you to stay weather aware check back for forecast updates we'll get the newest severe weather outlook for tomorrow at about 11:30 this morning and we'll see if there are any changes with that now let's pop on over to the model data now this is just one model for tomorrow and the reason i'm showing it is it seems to have a decent grasp on the timing now there are some other model data that suggest we might have a more active period after 10 a.m and that's entirely possible in north texas uh, that model also is further west initially with these storms tomorrow afternoon tomorrow evening but realistically we could see scattered severe thunderstorms after 10 a.m across north texas and northeast texas along a northward moving warm front those storms tomorrow morning could produce large hail 
damaging winds, the potential for a few tornadoes. And again, that's more of a if it happens versus it will happen scenario. We're just going to have to wait and see in terms of data exactly how that trends today with this high res data coming on in. Uh, what is more likely is about now well, early tomorrow afternoon, North Texas, Central Texas, isolated to scattered severe storm supercells are likely to form. Strongest of those could produce very large hail, damaging wind gusts, the potential for a tornado. And then early, you know, let's just say mid to late afternoon, early evening, we're going to see a line of storms fire up on a dry line, cool front combination, probably in western North Texas, down into western central Texas. Those storms likely to grow upscale into a line of storms, a solid line of storms pretty quickly that are going to move east at 40 to 50 miles an hour tomorrow evening into northeast Texas, east Texas, the Brazos Valley, etc. And those storms, the strongest of which are likely to produce damaging hurricane force straight line winds of 80 to 90 miles an hour, the potential for tornadoes embedded in that squall line, and the potential for pocket change size hail. Uh, this is going to be a situation similar to that experienced across portions of Oklahoma Sunday night where we had a lot of damaging wind and tornado spin-ups. And again, those tornadoes aren't necessarily going to be on the brief week side. Some of them, given the ingredients, could be stronger, longer lived. So we're going to have to keep an eye on all of that. But again, a couple of severe storms this morning, a couple of severe storms this afternoon in north, northeast Texas, a lull late tonight through early tomorrow morning, probably through sunrise, the potential for a few severe storms increasing after 10 a.m., and then we just it goes downhill from there across north Texas, northeast Texas, and east Texas through the middle and late evening. Once this line of storms makes it east of your location tomorrow evening, you're done with a severe weather threat. We also note the chance for some wet snow mixing in with rain across the Texas Panhandle tomorrow afternoon, and then we may see a light snow mix with rain across portions of northwest Texas, Texoma, north into Oklahoma tomorrow night, based on what this model shows and some other data. Uh, like Sunday, we're also going to be dealing with big-time gradient winds, environmental winds unrelated to thunderstorms across Texas once again tomorrow, tomorrow night, Friday morning. As this cold front blasts on east, dry line cold front, we'll see winds shift out of the south-southeast to the west, and some folks are going to see winds gusting over 50 miles an hour again. We're probably going to have more blowing dust, though not to the extent of which we saw on Sunday, but nevertheless, it's going to be very windy tomorrow across the entire state. Dust is probably going to be a thing again, as you might see by these strong winds blowing out of the west from El Paso, Big Bend National Park, the Permian Basin. We're probably going to see more dust in places like Austin, San Antonio, and even Houston by Thursday night or Friday morning. Let's take a quick look at the wildfire outlook for today through Friday. Today, very high to extreme wildfire threat across the borderland, far west Texas, around El Paso, down to southwest Texas, the Big Bend National Park, west Texas, the Permian Basin, lower risks farther east. We do note a bit of an enhancement across the Rio Grande Valley, Rio Grande Plains. As we head into Thursday, that risk uh, for uh, wildfires will be extreme across essentially east of the, or west of the dry line, excuse me, west Texas, the big country the Concho Valley, the Edwards Plateau, the Permian Basin, Southwest Texas, the Trans-Pecos, Davis-Guadalupe Mountains, into the borderland around El Paso and far west Texas. And again, with those winds gusting out of the west, over 50 miles an hour, very low humidity, any fires that do develop are going to spread extremely quickly. And then here's Friday, the threat for wildfires decreases across the western portions of Texas comparatively, but we see that higher risk essentially expand, for the lack of a better word, into South Texas, the Rio Grande Plains, deep South Texas, and the Hill Country as we see much drier air come in from the west up behind our upper level storm system departing Thursday night and those humidity values plummet. So again, that is the latest for the chance for a few severe storms today and a bucket load of severe storms tomorrow. Uh, we want folks to be weather aware, obviously, have a way to receive severe weather warnings, and this is not guaranteed to be a tornado outbreak or, you know, something that one might call a red letter day. I know there's going to be anxiety out there, but again, this isn't for sure written in stone. We There are several factors that could reduce the overall threat for severe weather tomorrow, and specifically, we need to see how and where everything lines up if we're going to see a threat for longer lived, you know, EF2 plus tornadoes. Tornadoes are tornadoes and we're going to have tornadoes tomorrow, I think, but 
you know, it takes a lot to make longer lived, nasty type tornadoes. But regardless, pay attention to the weather warnings. We are going to have chasers out and about. And we're definitely going to have live severe weather coverage here on the Texas Storm Chasers. Yours truly isn't going to be sleeping much over the next couple of days, but we're going to be here for you. Remember, if we have a tornado warning in the state of Texas, we will be live streaming. We're going to be live streaming on YouTube. We're going to be live streaming on Facebook, the Twitter. We're going to be live streaming, uh, hopefully, on Instagram, too. We'll see. We're also going to be live streaming coverage on Twitch. We want y'all to make sure you're definitely subscribed to the Texas Storm Chasers and Texas Weather Center YouTube channels. Uh, that's going to be the best place to watch live streams. That's where all the live streaming uh, video, not only for me, but for our Storm Chasers, will be tomorrow. Well, today and tomorrow. Uh, Facebook's been throttling our reach in terms of live video coverage, so you may not even see this video. You probably won't see our live coverage tomorrow, but we're there, so... Be sure to head over to YouTube, give us a follow, subscribe, hit that thumbs up button. We're going to be here for y'all, so we'll have more weather updates throughout the day. Y'all have a good Wednesday, and God bless.